Hello, yes, Nick Griffin's Liebensborn program, part two. When I say Liebensborn program, I'm just having a laugh, a joke. But anyway, anyway, Nick Griffin, like I've mentioned previously, talks about having more white babies, and I totally agree with them. But there's a massive flaw in this, a big, massive one. Not that I believe it was viable anyway, but there's an even bigger flaw in it. When we're talking about having more white babies, this program, where you insulate your children from the poisonous brainwashing of the liberal media and such, that is not uh, intended for the public, right? That program that he calls for can't be intended for the public, the general public. They would not embrace that. It, it, it's ludicrous, right? It literally is ludicrous. They'll have babies when they're ready, regardless what we are or anyone else says. So it's for the ideological nationalist, but if the women don't want any babies, then it's not happening no matter how many white men in the white nationalist movement want to start a big family. And given the percentage of ideological white women in the white nationalist movement the world over is so tiny, literally so tiny, because don't forget, you would have to be ideologically driven to embark on such a program, what Nick Griffin talks about, the Reconquista and having more babies. You would have to be ideologically driven to embark on such a program and see it through. You have children and then, I don't know, 20 years later or 18 years later, whatever, they have children. Uh, but anyway, so given, given women in the white nationalist movement would have to be ideologically driven to embark on such a program, we are talking about women you could probably count on your one hand, right? Because the small percentage, tiny percentage of white women in the white nationalist movement, the world over, within that tiny minuscule percentage, there may, there may be another smaller percentage that would embark on such a programme. Who does that leave us with? Brittany Pettibone and Lauren Southern. You see the ludicrousness of this when you dissect it and look at it properly in the cold light of day. Nick Griffin talks about having more babies. I totally agree. But again, is he referring to the general public? Because that's not happening. They're not listening to us and embarking on such a programme. He, um, he speaks about, he talks about, he's written about, right? That is not happening. They will have them when they're ready, if they have them at all. So then that leaves white women in the white nationalist movement the world over to rely on them we have to appeal to them and like i've said let's say there was thousands of them which there isn't the world over let alone here in britain right it's whether or not out of them thousands who's going to embark on such a program right now given there aren't thousands the world over well i'm unaware of them let's get i mean we're talking ideological women here because that's what you would have to be to embark on that recon reconquista program uh, Nick Griffin talks about. You would have to be. It wouldn't be your average member. That's just a member that would be over their heads. It would be uh, something just so alien and strange to them. I think you were off your head, you know what I mean? But um, your average person or your average voter would not be embarking on such a programme because I make this video because I've had a few emails and I'm a, I'm a fair guy, I'm a fair guy. If Nick Griffin's ever right, I'll be the first to say so and I'll put my hand up. If he's wrong, then I'll also be the first to say so and I'll uh, say so. But anyway, um, they've sent me messages that his programme is not for the general public. Okay, well, I, I gathered that. It's not for the general public. Who's it for then? White nationalist women, well, there hardly isn't, there's hardly any about the world over. You don't know about white women that vote for white nationalist causes. Well, they wouldn't. They're not ideologically driven. 
You'd have to be ideologically driven to embark on this. You know you would. So who are we left with? The world over. Not not here in Britain. The world over. A lot of Southern Brittany Pettibone, that other one off Red Ice Radio. And Goldie is the, there's a few of them, right? Have they got any children? Have they got a traditional husband yet? Are they living a traditional marriage, life, lifestyle, whatever? Well, no. So where are these ones coming from, Nick Griffin, that are going to embark on this reconquista to have more children to eventually uh, kick the invaders out in a hundred years' time, is it? Right. I mean, it's that bleeding stupid, Nick, isn't it? You've come up with this nonsense because you're not an idiot and you've thought this up and it's just a way of either... I don't know, redeems the right word or just a way of selling yourself again or it's just a fool that afties and the idiots or it's so you don't have to embark uh, upon real politics in the real world, which is electioneering because you don't want to. I don't know. I really don't know. But I know you know that that's not going to work. And given what I'm saying here now, it shows it can't work, right? Like I've said, if it's not for the general public, which it's not, you, uh, the, the public are not going to see some book or website or video where you're telling them to have children and insulate them from the, you know, poisonous um, liberal brainwashing media, whatever. The average uh, period, when not they vote for you, even if the members are not embarking on that, and you know they're not. So it'd have to be someone ideologically driven. So that leaves Brittany Pettibone and Lauren Southern. And you see the stupidness of all this now? You know what you need to do? Now, I'm not begging you. I'll beg you for nothing like I wouldn't beg anyone. You need to come off this silly, I don't know, don't know what. You need to break free from this nationalism today mindset you're back in from the 1980s because that was a load of baloney. That was the most stupidest period of British nationalism I've ever known, ever encountered. It was idiotic, Strasserism, back to the land. Oh, if anyone can get hold of any copies of them, nationalism today from the 80s read them it is truly bizarre but anyway that was a silly phase you were going in where you believe you're some revolutionary shishavara of the radical right or something when it was just a joke right you nick griffin and i'll be the first to say in fact i'll go back a bit here i was talking to a veteran british nationalist here in liverpool that said the two most feared nationalists in british nationalist history in britain was sir oswald mosley and Nick Griffin. And if I had to pick out of the two of them who was the most dangerous, it would be Nick Griffin, without a doubt. You, Nick Griffin, have the establishment terrified. You've now been reduced to a Facebook page, Jack Sen's Resistance Radio, and the Recon Reconquista bollocks, right? Because that's what it is. You know it is. And you need now to... I don't know what the word is. Let me just think redeem yourself or wake up i don't know i don't know your vocabulary is better than mine you probably think of a better way but either way this is all nonsense and now i've explained it even further not that there was any validity in it anyway the reconquista or having more babies now that I've, I've highlighted exactly how flawed it is because it's not for the general public, you'll agree. Okay, who's it for? Sorry for the repeating myself, but I'll have to. It's not for voters either, because they're just the public. They're just voters, not thinkers. It's not for your average member either. It's for people ideologically driven. So that leaves Brittany Pettibone and Lauren Southern. <laughs> okay, thank you.